in March of 2020, right before the lockdown, I drove up to Indiana to pick up the new Micro Mini. This, by the way, lost footage of that trip, hanging out with Matt of Matt RV Reviews. So, for the past few months, both trailers have been sitting here, in my driveway. Static. But no more. It is now late May. State parks are opening up, so it is time to go. Oh, it's hot in Miami today, but anyway, before we do any extended traveling with Mini Tini 2, the new trailer, I want to leave Mini Tini 1, the old trailer, protected, and I got this RV cover courtesy of RV Masking. So I'm going to install it on the trailer right now, and I do have a promo code for you guys, so I'm going to put that in the link in the description. So here's the main cover. It's very nicely packaged in this uh, vacuum sealed uh, bag. So um, that's it. I'm, I'm going to read the instructions and and see how easy it is to, to put it on. The first part might be the hardest, just because I have so much stuff on the roof. The solar panels, antennas. I have very few places where I can stand comfortably. It comes with these protectors for the gutter drains. Let me just grab a ladder. It is going to be much easier this way. It also comes with some wheel covers and also a cover for the propane tanks. And there's even one for the jack somewhere around here. There you have it. I want to thank RV Masking for providing this. And I'll put a link in the description along with the promo code. So, you know, if this is something you're interested in, uh, check it out. Now, how do I stick Minitini with the cover on inside the hole? Mm. That's another story for a different day. For now, it's staying protected. It's going to rain any moment now. It wasn't the easiest of tasks, but Minitini is back in the hole with the RV mask and cover. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. Well, hello everybody! Today we are going to continue upgrading our new Micro Mini 1708 FB by Wanabago and it comes pre-wired for a Voyager wide sight camera and that's a rear view camera and uh, that's what we're going to do today, install that rear view camera. But first, let's go inside, do a quick unboxing and then we'll come back here and, and brave the South Florida heat. Alright, let me show you what I got. First of all, I got the Voyager Digital Observation System. Uh, featuring eyesight which for which the the trailer is pre-wired and uh, by the way thank you adam uh, from Winnebago for sending this to me comes with instructions comes with the digital wireless lcd monitor and it comes with the camera let's see the camera first and here we go it looks pretty cool it looks pretty solid it, it has the the connector in the back and uh, it looks like it has like some lights for infrared uh, night vision and the antenna that connects that you know links to the monitor and then you can i guess it goes like this and you can there has to be a way to tilt it down maybe yeah i guess you you loosen these screws and then you can tilt it up and down pretty cool i'll read the instructions just in case i'm just <laughs> saying something uh, improper but i think that's how it works and this is the monitor and it seems fairly simple i've dealt with other camera monitoring systems that you have to like they run wires through the, you know, to, to like the radio installation and all that, uh, the, the head unit. And this one seems to be pretty, I see it. it's very nice, very small and out, yet another screen in, in my dash. But I, I think I'm going to save myself one screen with the next item. So, so we're still going to have the same amounts of screen, screens uh, to look at while driving. It comes with a suction cup mount that I guess then you, uh, you attach this to it. That's perfect. And then it has this power cable that uh, 
that connects to your cigarette lighter so that's uh, perfect okay that's the camera and now for the next thing uh, Adam also sent me an in-command tire pressure monitoring system and you know I I've tried a few of these and you know how important it is to have a tire pressure monitoring system as an early warning you know if a tire is losing air slowly it's happened to me more than once as you know and if you get a flat you know it's it's like that instant uh, uh, notification before you know it gets worse and you may destroy the tire on the road or this and that and this one seems pretty nice pretty simple actually i like the fact that each sensor comes with a qr code and this one does not have a, a screen uh, attached to it this this one uh, it, it works via bluetooth and it, it will send you notification to the phone uh, there's an app there's an app for that and this is the bluetooth yeah this is the bluetooth amplifier and um, you would place this somewhere in the front of the trailer. I don't think I'm going to need it here in Minitini since uh, uh, this trailer is so, uh, so short. But if you have like a long fifth wheel, you know, Bluetooth it, it, it has, a, has a range limitation as, as a technology. So um, th this would uh, overcome that and then, then you will get a solid signal even if you have like that 42 uh, toy hauler or something like that. Um, now let's go outside. I mean, actually, the weather is not cooperating, but I'm going to go outside and, and see if we can install the camera first and then we'll test the TPMS. I was reading the instructions and it should be a very easy swap. We just, just have to remove these four screws and there should be a connector hiding behind this plate. You connect that connector to the camera and then, you know, uh, attach the camera with the four screws, the same four screws. Should be easy. Right. that was fairly easy by the way the camera does come with an adapter just in case you don't have that pre-wired system and uh, I haven't figured out what this is yet uh, but it's uh, let, let's go into the truck now into the pickup truck and uh, set up the, the monitor and then I have to connect the truck to the to the uh, to the trailer because that's how the camera works you have to turn on uh, the parking lights or any I guess the any any of the headlights the parking lights and that's what powers the camera is connected to that uh, to that power source all right, so it comes with this uh, suction cup adapter here. And uh, where to put this? Well, I've been thinking, I don't want it to be here in the middle. You know, this is where I have my, my, my camera, you know, my, uh, my dash cam effectively. So I don't want anything blocking the view from that dash camera. So I'm going to be putting it here where the, since I got a new TPMS system, that I'm gonna be testing out. I'm not gonna be using my current TPMS, the one that I've had until now. So I'm gonna put the rear view camera right here. I think it's a, it's a good place for it. It doesn't really block uh, you know, my view of the highway or anything like that. And I'm gonna be using it not very often anyway. I put it a little higher so I, so I don't block the line of sight with my speaker there either. So this should work. This should work rather well. Boom. And now what I have to do is uh, route this cable to the to the cigarette lighter adapter we don't call them cigarette lighter adapters anymore but uh, that's what it is which i am using right now uh, with an adapter to charge our phones but we could always uh, connect the all this to, to the to, to the adapter in the back or i could get a splitter actually they, they sell some pretty good splitters for these things i might just route it through here this and we should, we should we should have power immediately. There you go. All right, let's move the truck into position. All right, let's hook up the power. That's our cousin, mini teeny one back there. So you see, I tilted down a little bit just so we get a, a better view of the. Yeah, and it, and it is losing signal, I have to look into that. Apparently some intermittent interference from the GoPro, which is not gonna be a problem as long as I don't place the GoPro right next to it. Well, that first sensor was probably like a silent movie, right? You couldn't hear anything I was saying because I forgot to turn on the mic. But luckily we have four sensors, so I have four chances at, make, at making it right. So here we go, let's... Uh, 
screw this one here. And as I said, you couldn't hear me, but it, ha it has a, a plastic, well, this one doesn't have it as, uh, as pronounced. So I guess you're not supposed to remove that plastic. You just put the battery like so, positive to the, to the top, and then just put it back together. And then, of course, we're going to, uh, you know, screw this to the valve stem and, uh, and then our sensor. And then uh, this serves to, to, to tighten it so it stays there. Um, tight. It's uh, harder for someone to steal it and uh, it won't fall off in the middle of the road. You know, it won't start coming, coming loose. All right, I've got two more sensors to prepare and then I'm going to a... Um, oh, oh, National Burger Day. <laughs> Uber Eats. Uh, and then I am going to download that app into my phone and I'll show you. I'll show you how it's done. All right, now let's install the sensors, which I'm happy to... Um, to say it, they're, they're very lightweight, so that uh, that may be a good thing. This is how you're supposed to do it. You screw uh, this nut first, and yeah, I bought a new microphone because this one, it's like the center of gravity. <laughs> it's always shifting. And then you insert the monitor, and then we're gonna uh, counterintuitively, but you know, it's, you're loosening it, but so you're making it tight against the sensor. And that's how it works. There. No, three. Now three more to go. You see, you see how this microphone it's, it's Well, I'm sorry, I had to turn on the AC. It's too hot in here. I'm gonna download that app now and I'll show you how it works. Okay, the, the pairing process is actually very straightforward. I just uh, had to scan the QR code on each of the tires, and here they are. And it, uh, there it tells me on the right. Uh, the PSI and the temperature of each of the tires. They're at 48, 49, 48, 49, which is uh, what the tires are rated for. Although I read on the side of the trailer that they're supposed to be at 45. So um, that's what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna, uh, you know, uh, deflate them a little bit, set up my alarms and all that. And, uh, and I'll keep you posted on, on how this works on the road. Uh, now that we're leaving, actually, for you, it's going to be in the past, but we're leaving tomorrow for our maiden voyage here on, on, the, on Minitini 2, the new Micro Mini 1708 FB. I guess this could be considered the beginning of the summer 2020 season. So that's what I'm going to go with, even though we're going to be weekend warriors at first, and then we're going to loop around Florida before going anywhere far away. That's a pretty cool view of downtown Miami to the right in the distance. Florida's Turnpike. Their slogan, the less stress way. There it is, the Guitar Hotel, opened in October 2019, part of the seminal hard rock hotel and casino, Hollywood. We are going on our maiden voyage, towing Mini Tini 2. Because when I brought her from Indiana, that doesn't really count, right? That was just four days. Uh, but today, today we're going to a Florida State Park, somewhere where we've never been. In any case, we're going to Jonathan Dickinson State Park, which is just north of Palm Beach by Jupiter. And uh, yeah, really excited, really excited to, to, to be able to, to camp again. Well, greetings from Jupiter, Florida. As we cross the Loxahatchee River here, we can see the Jupiter Inlet Lighthouse. We'll be back later to see it. There are two campgrounds here at the state park, one by the entrance with full hookups, it's called Pine Grove, and where we're going, the River Campground. Oh yes, it is such a beautiful day. By the way, I already lost the end caps. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's very warm, but it's very beautiful. And these trees are amazing. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is the perfect way to do social distancing. Well, excuse the air conditioner noise, but it is uh, summer in Florida, so we need it. Even though I haven't found the right size pizza stone, I think that they're called, we're going to attempt to make a pizza. Let me see if I remember how to do this. Pilot on, and then you push. Yes, we've got fire. Is it delivery or is it the journal? Here's the final product. It actually came out better than I expected. And just like that, our first afternoon comes to an end. We'll do some more exploring tomorrow. Did a live stream, but it didn't come out so great. The cell phone signal here is really bad. We barely got internet. Alright, let's go for a little hike. Here's the visitor center, which is closed because of COVID-19. Check it out. They have free Wi-Fi. It would have been a much better live stream uh, yesterday. It almost looks like a Cracker Barrel, but it is not. It's the visitor center. This seems to be a trail. Not very well marked, but... Hello, little fella. And here we have the Loxahatchee River. And look at that. I gotta get me one of those. The swimming area is closed as well. Check it out! It's like a miniature crab. We've got some beautiful pine trees in this park. I don't know if it is because we've been stuck indoors for so long, but all this looks beautiful. Very nice. They have a food truck here and it's open. And this is more like the like the boat ramp area. And this is where they also rent you like kayaks and stuff like that. I don't know if they're, they're renting. I, probably the rental is actually. It looks like the rental uh, office is open as well. Yeah, I said it was a food truck, but it's not. That's where they do the rentals. Apparently, uh, since you know we're still in the COVID thing, they, they don't allow the thing to do it inside, but they're doing it outside here. And unfortunately, no boat tours and no uh, no motor skips. So we're gonna have to do a kayak. The playground is closed. I feel sorry for the little kids. Let's check this out. It's like a pier or a boardwalk. That looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, this is very nice. Or is it the cabin fever? Or, but it's, maybe tomorrow morning I'll rent, I'll rent one of these. Uh, Canoes. I, I, I've always done kayak. I, don't, I have never done a canoe. No, it's not a gator, guys. Renting one of these would have been fun too. Or even the boat tour. Someday things will go back to normal, right? One can only hope. Out. It's mini tiny too. Let's go for a little drive. Here they have a bunch of off road bicycle trails, since this is one of the few areas in South Florida that has natural hills. You know, the ones created by forces of nature, not landfills. There it is. It is called Hobie Mountain, the highest natural point in South Florida. A whopping 86 feet above sea level. And here we are. There's a bunch of bugs up here. And that's the Atlantic Ocean right there. Let's go to the top.
Cape Canaveral is more or less in that direction, and there is an important rocket launch happening this afternoon. This was cool. This was the, the highest natural point in South Florida, although calling this South Florida is a bit of a stretch because um, we're kind of almost in Central Florida, if you think about it. All right, let's go into town. Maybe we can go see the lighthouse. Yes, let's go see the lighthouse. Let's check out the inlet first. It looks like everybody in town decided to take out their boats this weekend. I mean, the weather is beautiful. We bought our tickets and now here we are, walking through this tropical paradise. Or subtropical, rather. It is hot as hell, though. Well, there it is. Very lush, very lush. It is gonna be a climb, that's for sure. Check them out. It is almost like they are sailing in formation, like a parade or something. Nice views, and we're only halfway up there. Very nice. This would be another great place to watch the rocket launch. Nice houses, huh? Very little privacy when the lighthouse is open, but still, I wouldn't mind. Let's take one final look at the Fresnel lens and down we go! Apparently, originally, the light used lard oil for fuel. Wow, check out this tree! Well, it is twelve dollars to see to go up the lighthouse to climb up the lighthouse, and um, the museum happens to be closed because of COVID. So um, maybe a little steep for twelve dollars just to see the lighthouse. But I wanted to do it, and I wanted to show you guys the great views from the top. Now let's let's cruise around town a little bit more, and then we're going back to the campground to get something to eat. Someone recommended a restaurant around here called Guanabanas. Hmm, not really comfortable doing restaurants yet, perhaps in a week or two. Now on Jupiter Island. Very nice. 
To the right we have all these condos, and to the left the intercoastal, Indian River, this brackish body of water that begins here and goes all the way to Cape Canaveral. Here we have all these lavish mansions on both sides of the road. Let me tell you, really nice uh, houses on both sides of the road. It's kind of hard to see them because we, we cannot stop, it's, it's, it's a road. But uh, one of these days, uh, maybe I'll, 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 I'll ride a bike. Uh, some of them even have like a service entrance besides the, the main entrance. We were tempted to go to the public beach, but it's just too crowded. I don't really feel like going around and around looking for parking endlessly. Besides, we're hungry. Also, as I said, there's an important rocket launch this afternoon. The United States is sending humans back into space for the first time since the last space shuttle flight in 2011. Either we're too far away, or it is too hazy, or both. I can't see anything. Our consolation prize. We're making some burgers. Oh yeah. I added some onions and mozzarella because we forgot to bring bread. Let me tell you, this was a relaxing weekend. Tomorrow, we'll return to Miami. Riding in 